Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. I've got three multi-process welders to test and compare. I've got a Hitbox Synergic MIG 200 Pro, a Yes Welder First S MP200, and a Fronius Transteel 2200. These machines are drastically different in price, but in a broad sense, they have similar capabilities, although the Yes Welder can plasma cut. All three can MIG, TIG, and stick weld, and all three have auto Synergic MIG with material thickness selection. For this video, I primarily want to test the auto Synergic MIG mode with each of these welders. I will set each welder up for 1 8th, 3 16th, 1 quarter, and 3 8 inch material using only the automatic settings. I want to see how smooth each one runs, and I will cut and etch to see how well they burn in with the automatic settings. Before I get to welding, I'll give a brief overview of each machine. In the middle, I've got the Yes Welder MP200, which I've done several videos with already. It is a MIG, TIG, stick, and plasma cutting machine. It has a Synergic MIG mode where you pick the wire size, the shielding gas, the material thickness, and it will automatically set the voltage and wire feed speed based on your selections. You can adjust the wire speed up or down from there, but the voltage will always automatically adjust along with the wire speed. You can offset the voltage up or down, but there's no fully manual MIG mode. I thought the MIG mode ran a bit cold and rough with the auto settings, but we'll see how the cut and etch results look. MIG has 2T and 4T modes, and that's pretty much it for MIG features. It does have a burn back adjustment, but I tested it from 0 through 10 and paid careful attention, and that setting does nothing. The welder can also stick weld and scratch start TIG. Stick and TIG are as basic as those processes can get, and neither of them can reach the 200 amps of output that the machine claims in the specs. Stick is good for 160 amps max and TIG 180. The S welder does have a 6010 mode, but it doesn't run 6010 very well, and I couldn't tell much difference when switching back and forth from the 6010 mode. The plasma cutting is a little finicky, but it does it, and the other two machines do not. It is currently listed at $1,000, though Yes Welder does have frequent sales on their website. The accessories it comes with are standard generic welder fare with cheap insulation, aluminum cables, and cheap hoses. It doesn't come with a shielding gas flow meter, but it does come with a TIG torch, a MIG gun, a plasma torch, and a stick stinger. Next up, I have the Hitbox Synergic MIG 200 Pro. This welder also has auto Synergic MIG where you set your wire size, shielding gas, and material thickness, and it sets the voltage and wire speed automatically. From there, you can actually independently adjust the voltage and wire feed speed, and the display will show a recommended range based on the settings you picked. The setting that you're adjusting will turn red if you go outside the recommended range. It also has a fully manual MIG mode where you simply adjust the wire feed speed and voltage as you see fit. It has 2T and 4T modes for MIG, and there is a knob inside near the drive system for adjusting burn back. There's also a pigtail out the front with a dense connector for changing the MIG polarity, and it has adjustable inductance for MIG. It supports an optional spool gun, and it includes a liner to run aluminum with the included MIG gun. It has what it calls lift start TIG. We'll see if it actually is lift start or if it's scratch start. Like the S welder, there's no gas solenoid for TIG and no remote amperage control that I'm aware of. It also has a stick welding mode with adjustable arc force and a 6010 mode, plus an optional VRD mode to reduce open circuit voltage. This hitbox was $450, so it is less than half the current price of the S welder. It has more features than the S welder MP200, but it doesn't plasma cut, and a TIG torch is not included in the box. Also, I haven't actually used the welder yet, so we'll see if everything actually works. As I said before, I will be focusing on the auto synergic MIG settings on all of these machines in this video, but I do plan to eventually test all the features of this machine to see if it can do everything it claims. And finally, I have a Fronius Transteel 2200. While the hitbox was less than half the price of the S welder, the Fronius is over twice the price. Considering the increased cost, it's no surprise that the machine has far more features than the others, and it comes with far nicer accessories, and it includes a gas flow meter, and it feels like a lot better build quality. It can do auto synergic MIG with material thickness selection, as well as full manual MIG. 
It has interval welding and spot welding modes. It has 2T and 4T modes along with multiple 4T options. It has inductance control, burn back control, and an adjustable arc length adjustment for when you're in automatic synergic mode. They aren't included in the package, but you can get liners for the MIG gun to run aluminum. It has a cold wire feed with adjustable speed and more. For TIG, it has a dedicated argon input on the back with a built-in gas solenoid. The included TIG torch has two switches. One turns the arc on and off and can also switch between two different amperage settings when in 4T mode. The second switch allows remote amperage changes from the torch. The torch is a little bulky for my taste, but the head can rotate so that you can keep the switches where you want them. It also has a fully adjustable pulse mode in TIG, as well as a tacking feature that supposedly pulses in a specific way to help the puddle connect two pieces quickly without filler. Stick welding unfortunately does not have a 6010 mode, but it does have adjustable arc force, hot start, and anti-stick, as well as VRD. This welder also has power factor correction built in, so it should draw much less amperage at a given output than the other two welders. And something I personally think is cool about Fronius, it comes with a signed calibration certificate that shows how accurate all of the voltage, amperage, and wire feed speeds are on this particular welder. Like the hitbox, I haven't tried this welder yet, so we'll see how it does. And with that out of the way, let's finally do some welding. You know what they say about the best laid plans? Well, the hitbox welder only has auto settings for 030 and 040 inch wire. I have 030 and 035 inch wire, so I plan to just use the 030 wire for all the testing. Turns out the auto thickness settings max out at 3 16 inch with 030 wire. I don't have any 040 wire, and I wouldn't expect the auto settings to be accurate with 035. And the auto thickness setting maxes out at a quarter inch even with 040 wire. And it turns out the Fronius also doesn't have an auto program for much thicker than 3 16 when using 030 or 035 solid wire MIG with 7525 shielding gas. Neither welder is actually maxed out at that point, but they don't have auto settings for higher thicknesses. Technically, when set for flux core, the auto settings on the hitbox do go thicker, and the Fronius auto settings go much thicker when set for CO2, and over 5 eighths of an inch thick when set for flux core. But only the S welder has auto settings that go above a quarter of an inch when set for solid wire MIG with 7525 shielding gas. The S welder's auto settings go all the way to half inch. My overall plan is still basically the same, but I'll be using the manual settings on the hitbox and Fronius for quarter and three eighths inch. I cleaned the mill scale off the welding area before welding, so every weld today is going on to clean bare metal. Starting with the hitbox, the auto settings for one eighth of an inch are a bit rough, leaving some large spatter that sticks pretty hard, but it did seem to burn in okay. It's the same story on 3 16th of an inch with the auto settings. It seems to burn in nice, but it makes a lot of spatter and the arc is a bit loud. Adjusting the voltage down smooths and quiets the arc and largely eliminates the spatter, but I wanted to see how it does on the auto settings whenever possible. For quarter inch and 3 eighths of an inch, I used manual settings and I switched to 035 wire since that's what I would be using for the other two machines. With manual settings, I was able to get a smoother arc with less spatter, while still seeming to burn in well. When welding 3 8 of an inch, I initially had the wire speed maxed out, and it only welded for a second or so, and then it cut out. I was able to restart immediately, but it cut out again. I have a feeling it is some kind of overload protection kicking in. I turned the wire speed down just a little bit, and I was able to weld the rest of the way across the piece, and it did not cut out again. So. It seems that this is the very most you can get out of this machine. Switching to the Yes welder, I started out with 1 8 inch material and fully auto settings. It runs a bit harsh and super cold. The final weld doesn't look terrible, not perfectly straight because I didn't keep it perfectly straight, but man did it go in slow and cold. It felt so cold. 
I turned the settings way up and ran a second bead, so we'll see how the cut and etch looks on both. On 3 16 of an inch with the auto settings, it's more of the same. Loud, harsh arc, and it feels cold. I ran a second bead with the welder nearly maxed out on 3 16 of an inch. On quarter inch, the auto settings didn't feel quite as cold as the auto settings for 1 8 and 3 16 but it still ran much better when I turned the settings up. Um, wow, I don't know. And for the second bead, I actually did max out the wire feed completely. On 3 eighths of an inch with the auto settings, I'll leave my real-time reaction in from the ArcShot camera audio. Wow. Not too bad. It doesn't seem terribly cold. But, um, oh gosh, the arc, arc is so harsh. It hurts my ears. Crazy popping. But anyway. After that, I once again maxed the welder completely out and ran a second bead. It ran smoother with less popping than the auto settings, but it didn't seem to run much hotter since the auto settings for 3 eighths of an inch nearly maxed the welder out already. Next up was the Fronius, and the first bead on 1 eighth of an inch went in pretty rough. There was a lot of spatter and the arc stuttered a bit. One of the settings within the auto synergic mode is an arc length setting, and I originally left that at zero, but I decided to turn it up a little bit. But when I went to run another bead, I also realized that there was some junk on the table under the first piece, and it may have just been a bad ground that was causing the stuttering. Either way, I ran a second bead, and it did run much better. It still stuttered a bit on the start, but it didn't stutter once running, and it burned in much better. I'll cut and etch both welds. Moving on to 3 16 I had the welder topped out in the auto program when running on 035 wire. Technically, the top end is 155 thousandths, which is a bit less than 3 16 but that's still what I went with so that I could stick with the auto settings at least for this last bead. And it actually did seem to burn in okay. I switched to manual mode from there, and for quarter inch, all I did was turn the heat up a bit from where the auto settings had it for 3 16 it actually ran hotter than I expected, and I kind of started to speed up, then I changed my mind. So the bead's a bit cattywampus, but there it is, and I will cut and etch it. Moving on to 3 8 inch with the Fronius, I simply turned the settings up a bit more, and it seemed to run pretty well. Now it's time for cutting and etching all of these welds. I didn't measure amperage and voltage and all that for this video. I just wanted to see how well each is actually burning in. I do understand that a better test would be multiple beads on each thickness to get an average and weed out maybe technique issues. I also know that my technique was far from perfect. In particular, I wasn't pointing quite as far towards the vertical piece as I probably should have on any of these welds because I was consciously trying not to block the camera. It was also difficult to maintain perfect consistency when I was constantly switching machines, amperage, material thickness, and getting the camera ready before and after every bead. I know, excuses, excuses, but the point is, any of these welders might be able to do a bit better with some setting tweaks or simply just some practice beads without all the switching around. Ideally, to get the best out of each machine, I would run at least a few practice beads with each machine at each setting, but ain't nobody got time for that. On the plus side, since I did equally not great on all of them, it should still make for a fair comparison. And with that, let's start with the hitbox on 1 8 inch with fully auto settings. It is tied in right to the toes on both the vertical and horizontal sections. It is very shallow on the vertical piece, but it's not a straight line, so it is tied in. 
I think there is a tiny section right at the root where both the vertical and horizontal pieces may not have burned in, but overall not bad. On 3 16 inch, fully auto, it's a similar story, but a little better. Still very shallow penetration, but it is tied in right to the toes. And again, same story on quarter inch, with the manual settings I picked. Shallow penetration, but if I compare the shape of the plate edge at the top and the bottom, even the vertical section looks to have burned in a bit. On 3 8 inch, I had the machine as high as it would go without tripping out, and it burned in pretty good. Next up is the Yes Welder, and that machine just felt underpowered compared to the hitbox. On 1 8 inch, with the full auto settings, the weld is hardly tied in at all. The horizontal piece has just a tiny bit of belly in one spot, but the toe and the root are straight, and the vertical piece is just a straight line, no tie-in at all. Here is the second bead that I did with the welder turned up a lot. Definitely much better, but the welder considered these settings suitable for one quarter inch, and this is only one eighth of an inch. Moving on to 3 16 the auto setting burned in a bit on the bottom, and maybe a tiny bit on the vertical piece, but there are large sections of the toe and root on both where it didn't burn it at all. Strangely, when I turned the settings up on the welder quite a bit, it didn't do much better. It did a little better on the bottom piece, but the vertical piece looks to have not tied in at all. If it did, it's very slight. On quarter inch with the full auto settings, it did a little bit better than the 3 16 but it still has spots at the toe and the root where it didn't burn in into the bottom piece. And as with 3 16 cranking it up past the auto setting might have helped a little, but not much. On 3 8 of an inch with the auto settings, the S welder failed to get any tie in on the vertical piece. It is just a razor straight line, and it only burned into the middle of the bottom piece, leaving the toe and the root not tied in at all. Considering that the auto settings for 3 8 of an inch already has the machine nearly maxed out, it should be no surprise that maxing the welder out made very little difference. Lastly, we have the Fronius. First up is that initial bead on 1 8 inch material. You can see that neither line is perfectly straight, so it did tie in a little, but there is definitely a section at the root that isn't quite tied in. I don't want to be too hard on it considering the stuttering and possibility of a ground issue, but either way, it's tied in okay, but not amazing. Here you can see the second bead I ran, and that one is burned in great. This was still in auto synergic mode, and I didn't turn up the thickness setting, but I did adjust the arc length setting. On 3 16 of an inch, with the auto setting set for 155 thousandths, which is a little less than 3 16 it burned in just fine from the toes to the root. On 1 quarter inch, with my cattywampus bead, it burned in very well. On 3 8 of an inch, the penetration is relatively shallow, but it burned in at the root all the way to the toes on both sides. And this is the only welder of the three that was not completely maxed out at this point. In the end, I would say the Fronius and the Hitbox both have more realistic auto settings than the Yes welder, as well as more power overall. The Yes welder's auto settings are woefully cold, and even cranked up, it just didn't burn in as well as the others. The hitbox definitely has some quirks with the auto settings, but with 030 wire on 1 8 and 3 16 inch steel, the auto settings were usable. And when I wanted to weld thicker, all I had to do was crank up the settings from there, and I was able to get decent results on 1 quarter inch and 3 8 inch steel. The Fronius did run strange for that first bead on 1 8 of an inch, whatever the reason. But even that bead did burn in a little, and after that, both 1 8 and 3 16 burned in great on auto settings and 1 quarter and 3 eighths inch were no problem as well with manual settings. All three of these machines are dual voltage, and I originally planned to test all of them on 120 volts as well. I will do more with these welders, including testing actual output, power draw, power factor, and I will test all of them on 120 volts. But this video is long enough, so that'll come another day. In the meantime, if you have any questions, or if there's anything specific you'd like me to test out on these welders, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.